Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about some fundamentals of virtual lands. And I want to clear uh, these concepts for a lot of people uh, because you know in dealing with uh, large networks or even small networks VLANs play a very important role and if you have your concepts clear as to how VLANs fundamentally work uh, you can do a lot of good in your network. So let's get started. Why do we need VLANs? The whole idea of using a VLAN in a network is it reduces the size of a broadcast domain. What is a broadcast domain you ask? In any LAN segment, uh, a set of devices that receive a broadcast which is sent uh, by any one of the other devices in that same set form a broadcast domain. So. Uh, you always want to keep that broadcast domain smaller. The reason being, if you have a lot of devices that are, a lot of applications that are using uh, broadcast in your network, that can create a lot of traffic in your network and that can actually slow your network down. VLANs reduce the size of this broadcast domain and that way is improve the quality of your network. So they play a very, very important role. And in the next slide, I'll talk. I'll show you. You know, I'll give you a logical overview of how your network looks like when you have uh, VLANs. For the most part, in my experience, in small medium businesses, uh, they they typically have a flat network, and then they run into issues where the network is not performing well. They they try to add more servers and applications on top of it, and they run into all these issues and come to find out that uh, the, the, the network was not VLAN correctly. So, so by definition, uh, a VLAN uh, or VLANs are administratively defined subset of a switch, switch ports that are in the same broadcast domain. So you basically go into a switch and they are local to every switch. So you know it's, it's something that you go into a switch uh, you create a database, you add the VLAN number and then you select a bunch of switch ports and you make them part of that VLAN. Now, uh, what what does that mean? Now, typically, uh, each VLAN corresponds to each, you know, like like one VLAN will correspond to one IP subnet. So they, they dictate a one-to-one -one relationship. So, so that's something that you need to keep in mind. So, you know, you have a VLAN 10 that all the devices that are part of the VLAN 10 will be part of the same subnet. You cannot have two different subnets uh, in the same VLAN. Uh, unless you're talking about things like private VLAN and stuff, which is not uh, a subject I want to discuss in this video. Now, layer 2 switches, uh, by default, will forward frames between devices in the same VLAN. So, you know, if you, if you have uh, two devices that are part of, uh, say, VLAN 10, and you have device 1 uh, which is a laptop and, and a device 2 which is probably a printer and it's trying to you know get access to the printer so it can print some something it sends a packet to the switch the switch doesn't forward that packet out to the router it would basically look at the mac address and look at the mac uh, or the you know dynamic mac table and uh, the destination mac address matches which port and forwards that traffic out to the print printer directly without it going all the way up to the router uh, versus if the laptop and the printer were in two different VLANs then that traffic will go all the way to the router and depending upon the policy on the firewall or the router that traffic will now be switched. So inter VLAN that brings me to the next point the inter VLAN traffic is handled by either a router or a layer 3 switch or you know you would have heard the term if you are very familiar with Cisco multi layer switch. So that's something that we need to keep in mind. Alright, so now that we've looked at the fundamentals of VLAN, uh, let's look at a network diagram. A very, very fundamental network. You have a switch here, uh, a layer 2 switch, layer 2 only, uh, and then you have a, a router slash firewall gateway, uh, like a SMB gateway, like a sonic wall or something like that. Uh, this slide represents the different combinations of, uh, you know, uh, ports and how they are assigned, whether they become an access port, uh, a trunk port, and we'll also talk a little bit about a hybrid port uh, in some instances. So you can see I have three different types of ports as I mentioned. There's an access port, 
there is a trunk port that's a trunk between the switch and the router and then there is also a hybrid port so the PCs uh, are part of uh, you know the hybrid uh, or the access port uh, the, uh, the the server is also part of the access port the printer is part of the access port phone which is connected here and you can see there's a PC which is connected to the phone so the phone actually has a switch port um, uh, at the back and and this is very common in in SMBs uh, because this uh, allows for uh, the end customer to save on cabling cost which is which can be very high exorbitant in some cases so this is a very good way of uh, uh, utilizing the existing infrastructure and saving saving on uh, cable cost as long as you know what you're doing so so here uh, I wanted to show you guys that the link between any link between switches to switches so if there was another switch here uh, which was going to connect like in a daisy chain fashion to this switch that port will be again a trunk port uh, the port which again goes to the router uh, can be a trunk port because now we are basically transporting these multiple VLAN traffic across this link so this is a logical overview of, uh, of how the network looks like uh, with different VLANs and what are the different uh, like what are the functions of the different uh, ports so let's look at to understand uh, the concept of access, trunk, tagged, untagged. We have to go back to the fundamentals. We have to look at the Ethernet packet. So you look at uh, how uh, a packet, the Ethernet packet, looks like. You have uh, the destination MAC. You have the source MAC. There's a preamble. Obviously, there's an Ether type. Ether type specifies whether it's an IP packet or if it's an R or whatnot. Uh, and then there's the actual data, and then the CRC associated with it. So you can see that uh, the, the, the one on the top here is actually that doesn't have any sort of a dot one q uh, field associated with it. Uh, the second packet has a dot one q field associated associated with it. This is where uh, the device you know indicates the VLAN ID. So it's a way of uh, telling a switch that the packet that you've received, belongs to a particular VLAN. That's how the switch figures out that uh, you know a packet that I've received from a particular device uh, has is tagged or untagged. Now uh, to tag a packet uh, you know you can either use the standard 802.1Q which is what you would see for the most part uh, every vendor use or Cisco uses uh, ISL or inter switch link I believe. Uh, and that's their proprietary protocol, which eventually was used to make uh, the standard 802.1Q. So the idea is that it allows for us to recognize whether the packet is tagged or whether it's untagged. So, so, so this one is on the top is untagged, the one in the bottom is tagged. So now what is an access port? An access port is always untagged like that's by default like you know you will if the moment someone says it's an access port always you're talking about something where uh, you know you will receive traffic untagged uh, or even if you receive it as tagged you will basically you know associate it with uh, that VLAN which is untagged on that particular port so again the access port on the switch can only belong to a single VLAN you cannot have multiple VLANs uh, on uh, you know on a port which is defined as an uh, access port it will always belong to one single VLAN. A trunk port, on the other hand, uh, is again as I mentioned between switch to switch or a switch to a router, uh, and that's where you know you always send tagged traffic uh, on the trunk port. Now there is a concept of native VLAN which I'm going to touch upon in the next slide, uh, but uh, for now. Uh, for your understanding think of it as a trunk port you always you know between the switch and the router the switch always tags the traffic sends it to the router the router looks at the tag and associates it with particular interface so the router might have uh, you know multiple interfaces associated with the VLAN and, and things like that so again the trunk port will have multiple VLANs and the tags are recognized by either dot one q or ISL so that's the packet that we see over there now hybrid port is, is pretty interesting. You can have multiple tag ports. Now this is a concept which I've seen a lot with uh, HP. You know, HP uses this uh, hybrid ports quite a bit. Um, I think even Cisco supports. Uh, you know, Cisco 
all the Cisco layer three switches, layer two switches, they also have this concept. Uh, so, so this is something you know which was specifically in that case where you had the phone and then you had the PC behind the phone. Uh, so, so you can have multiple tagged uh, you know uh, VLANs and you have a single untagged VLAN. So that's a hybrid port. So what happens here is when uh, the you know PC when on this thing on, the, on this on this link that connects between the phone and the switch, when the PC sends the traffic, it does not tag the traffic. So that traffic switches from the phone goes all the way up to the switch, and then the switch basically says, oh, this is an untagged packet. I'm going to make it part of uh, VLAN 10, which is untagged in my case. However, when the phone sends its traffic it will always tag it and send it to send it to the uh, switch so the switch knows that this is a, a voice traffic or or a phone traffic or associated with voice it could be either control or rtp and i need to put in certain policies like quality of service policies or associated with uh, a different queue on that particular port so i can give it much more priority uh, and then there is also things like 802.1p and, and and stuff like that which gets added to the packet as it moves upwards uh, so that it gets uh, appropriate quality of service but this is again you know this is something that again comes back to tagged untagged uh, tag is something where you have a dot one q associated with it untagged doesn't have a dot one q or isl associated with it let's talk about native vlans native vlans is also something that people get uh, confused with a lot uh, but you know again as I mentioned here, a native VLAN is a term which is used with interfaces that are configured as VLAN trunks. Quite a lot of times you would see uh, native VLAN being as associated with a VLAN trunk. By default, uh, frames from VLAN 1 belong to the native VLAN and are carried across the trunk untagged. So this would be traffic like CDP traffic between Cisco. You know, Cisco uses CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol. Um, and uh, you know that doesn't have any tag associated to it so Cisco will use VLAN 1 to, to transmit that packet so that the router knows that you know this is the uh, switch that is associated with me on this particular port so you know that so if you would see by default on the Cisco switch you would have a trunk port and there will be a native VLAN of VLAN 1 now we again that's again native VLAN is that is a VLAN that is not associated explicitly to any tag on the 802.1q link so you know uh, on that dot one q link if if you receive a traffic which is untagged you become part of vlan 1 and it, you, it, it doesn't have to be vlan 1 all the time you can actually change the native vlan to you know you can say uh, in my network i want to keep native vlan or my management vlan for instance to you know vlan whatever vlan 10 or whatever you want it want it to be all right so this is an ethereal uh, capture and it gives you a very clear idea of how the actual packet looks like so you can see a dot one q tag packet here so you can see uh, 802 dot one q tag packet uh, with the id of 110 and an untagged packet and that doesn't have a uh, dot one q or isl uh, uh, you know uh, header associated with it so as simple as that so when the switch receives uh, uh, the packet with the dot one q it it knows that it belongs to VLAN 110 and it appropriately puts it in the right VLAN, associates it with the right VLAN. 